I'm Olivia Bonovaznenko with Modern Wall Street at the New York Stock Exchange with Stephen Guilfoyle. Stephen, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Stephen, the market was rally city. Now it's come to a little halt. What is your take on this? Well, you see, we, we hit that 1812 technical level way back on last Thursday. And at that point, it's when you saw talk of maybe not a production cut, but a production freeze coming out of a few of the countries that produce oil. It got people excited. They got fired up. They bought it off the lows. And we had a, almost a parabolic rally from Thursday afternoon through last night's close. And the index, the S&P 500, actually stayed within a, a channel that was almost a straight diagonal line at that point. So we had a really nice horizontal move, I guess I should say. <laughs> but it was, it was a really nice rally. It's, that trend line is no longer intact. But the 1922 level has become a pivotal fight here for the S&P 500. We lost the level, but we regained the level. And I think that is the key to the rest of this day as we move forward. And Stephen, I know that you like to see the uncoupling between the market and oil. And as the market has come to this halt, oil continues to rise. Are you going to expect oil to continue to do its climb? Well, you know, there's, there's so much talk coming out of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. Everybody's kind of waiting for the other guy to do something, but nobody's committing to any kind of freeze or any kind of, any kind of coordinated cut. So I don't think, I think it's kind of false hope. These guys don't work well together. We will see plenty of headline risk in this space. I'm sure we'll see a downward move at some point, if not a final upward move when they all capitulate and finally work together because they have to. But I don't think they're there yet. I think they need revenue more than they're willing to put off fighting off losses. I think they're willing to accept losses just to get some revenue in the door at this point, especially Iran after what they've been through. And Stephen, last week you told me that gold is our defense. And since then, it has gone down a little bit. Did I jinx it or do you still have an optimistic outlook on it? You know, today's stocks are holding their ground. Uh, defense is back in vogue today. All right, the utility, utility sector is strong. Gold is strong today. Uh, treasuries are strong today. So all your defensive plays are back in today, even though even though equities aren't taking it on the chin. I think this is a digestion day for the market as long as we can hang on. Even if we give up 1922, if we back up to 1915 or even 1908, we're still technically sound. And with all those defensive plays still on, it's, this is maybe the most positive day of the last five. And Stephen, there's been a lot of economic data reports released this week. Are there any that we should be paying most attention to? Oh, uh, well, you know what? We still have the CPI tomorrow. And that, that's going to be a doozy, okay? The, the core CPI has been running about 2.1% year over year, although the Fed likes to make believe that core inflation is only running 1.3%, 1.4% because they look at the PCE. The rest of the planet looks at CPIs. And our CPI is running at 2.1% year over year. If it continues to do so, if there's no backing up on that item tomorrow, I think, uh, I think it'll really drive it home that there is some inflation, that the regular, the common American, the people we really care about, is facing some inflation. Okay, SARS, well, we're signing off, and we always salute your insight. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs>